Good morning, and welcome to the University United Methodist Church on this very first Sunday of Easter as we come together to celebrate Christ and to celebrate Christ in one another. We pray that your week has been a blessed one, and the week ahead will have God leading you everywhere within his path. I wanted to look today at some scripture which brings us face to face with the reality of our own faith. It's from 1 John, the first chapter, the first to the seventh verses. And here John gives us, We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we've heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that your joy may be made complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in the darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. May God add his blessing to those who hear and bear his word this day. You know what's unique? It was about a week ago that we all gathered for Easter. This text was written between 80 and 90 AD. So think about it for a moment. 80 to 90 years after the fact of the resurrection, the disciples and the followers were still proclaiming Christ, but not only proclaiming him, but finding joy and hope and giving us direction in the purpose of Easter itself. The resurrection and when we look at that we do think back just a week ago we gathered as congregations we gathered as families dressed in our finest to proclaim the risen Lord and here we are today and we have to ask what may be missing I believe part of what's missing is something that brought me into the United Methodist Church in the first place and that was a cognitive search for Christ I was looking for an intellectual Christ. I personally was looking for one who could lead me and unlike some of my brethren who looked to just the emotion and declare that it was a great worship service if we got someone to cry. The fact of the matter is, I would look and say, give me the facts. Give me the facts. So many people wanted facts, but when we look to Jesus Christ, we have to turn back just to the synoptic. We have to turn back to the history itself and try to be a faithful follower based on our understanding and what that means. I will never forget the brokenheartedness of my mother when she went to church and the church she was attending looked at her after her years of faithfulness and denied that she even knew Jesus Christ because she had never spoken in tongues. She was brokenhearted and never returned to church. Matter of fact, the last church service she attended was the Christmas Eve candle lighting service here in this very room. And I thought, you know, after all the years of ministry, this is the first time she has attended one of my services. And I'll always remember that. But I'll also remember her brokenness, her questioning, am I really part of Christ because I didn't take on such an emotional sense that I may spoke within one of the spiritual gifts. You know, when we look at this, we have to say a cognitive approach to faith for me was one driven by fact. How many of y'all look at that? How many of y'all search that? How many of y'all cringe a little bit when the world looks at you and says, you know, their wish for the church is our extinction. 
Their wish for the church is that we ourselves would come to such a cognitive approach that we ourselves would deny God rather than claim him and who we are. A psychological study states that according to cognitive theories, what we think, the cognition, what we feel, the emotion and the effect, and how we act and interact with one another is truly a cognitive approach. I think that what we have missed for so long is that we haven't looked at the total approach. We've put our emotions aside. And I think that's where we change, that we no longer boast in the emotional experience of knowing our Christ. As one wise person said to me last Sunday, God has experienced everything that we have experienced, including death. Well, in my cognitive sense, I started thinking through, what does he mean? And then he looked at me and said, when his son died, he fully understood our grief. You see, we need to look back at Easter and we need to take the total approach. We need to see that within our historical studies that Jesus Christ sent by God, born in a manger, raised in a carpenter's shop, one who was hated even as a child because he knew so much about his true heavenly father, one who was ridiculed, one who in his ministry was sought out for death, one who gave and cried knowing what we had done within our sins, one who finally stood before Pilate and said, you say I am, and heard Pilate say, I wash my hands of you, crucify him. The one that felt the nail in his hand, the one who was lifted on the cross, who saw his mother cry, the one who was put in the tomb, and the one who was resurrected, Mary sitting there crying, saying to the person she thought was the gardener, if you'll just tell me where you put him, I'll go and get him. The disciples running back to the others to tell them that he's no longer in the tomb. Do you see the emotion with that? Do we ourselves really sense what it means within our lives today to understand that the Savior, the Son of God, came to earth and he came to earth to give us life. He gave up his own life in agony and pain. On that day of Good Friday, would it mean so much more to us as Christians if when we thought about that third hour, about how he gave up his spirit, if a tear came to our eye like his mother's? You see, I think that we are missing this. We're missing the understanding of Lent in those 40 days of sacrifice to be able to give up and to sacrifice something in myself which helps me to understand Jesus' sacrifice. Something we can never come to a total understanding of until we are truly persecuted, which I pray we never are. But one that draws us then on that holy week on the Last Supper, on that Holy Week when we think about Good Friday, on that Holy Week when we come to church on that Easter Sunday and we shout out, He is risen, hallelujah. Maybe if we had more of that emotion and less concern about the cognitive. Maybe if we were to look at the world and say, I tell you what, as you tell me there is no God, and you tell me that you're an atheist, let me remind you there are more Christians and more believers in this world than there are non-believers. So you prove to me there's not a God. You want to be cognitive with the fact you prove to me there is not the God. But to be able to come today on this first Sunday of Easter and to look at it differently. We're going to be celebrating something different. We'll be celebrating the death of one who forgave all sin and then discovered 
he was alive. A few years ago, I had an Easter experience, not one that was on Easter Sunday, but I was the hospital and the police chaplain for a small community. And there was a major car wreck on the freeway and I was called to the hospital because I was informed the person driving the vehicle had been killed. And when I got there, I went into the waiting room and I looked into the eyes of that family that was waiting in anticipation and they knew what I was going to say. And I looked and I noticed the grief. I noticed the pain. And as I announced, I'm sorry, but he passed in the wreck. And I was waiting to do grief counseling. A nurse came in and whispered in my ear that he was still alive. And they heard her. And to be able to see them change from the atmosphere of death into the atmosphere of life, I don't know who was wrong in giving the message that he had passed, that he was dead. But I will tell you, the family didn't care. The one who they had come to mourn, they found was alive. And that was enough. They didn't have to see the chart. They didn't have to see his hospital bed. All they had to do was hear the truth. He's alive. You see, Today's scripture expresses to us the truth of Easter, the truth of our forgiveness of sins, and even more, the relationship that God wants with his children. And without that emotional connection, how can we feel the greatness of Easter? Without emotion, how can we share what was said from the beginning, what we have heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the word of Christ before us. And today, if you love God and let your behavior show it, if you believe and claim to be an Easter people, let your behavior show it. Because you see, the story of Easter is a love story. It's a story of life. It's a story of being surprised that the one that you thought was dead is not only alive, but he's alive in the fullness of all things that we can have life eternal. It's the first Sunday of Easter. Friends, what has God done for you? Shed the tear, show the smile, say the words. The facts will remain the same, but people look to us and say, show me, show me, by what you feel inside. And if a Christian walks around with only information, but nothing to show his great love and emotion for that information, then we're dry. It's Easter, my friends. Let us celebrate. Let us share. And let us love one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love and the many blessings you have put upon us. We ask this day, O oh Lord, as we look to you, that you bless those who are still seeking. And for those that look through the pages and look for facts, let them see that even as Wesley said, what we need is to believe the whole Bible. What we need is to believe the wholeness of God. What we need is to believe. Because within that faith, O oh Lord, we will find joy. And in our joy will be made complete in the knowledge that you are with us now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and be blessed this day.